I'm not going to go anything more advanced than this. There are much more complicated shapes, and if you decide to take AP Chemistry or Chemistry in college, you'll get into all of those different uh, structures that involve lots of non-bonding pairs. So what I'm actually going to do is I am just going to start with a tetrahedral shape. Okay, So we're going to start with a tetrahedral molecule, and I'm going to start popping atoms off so that you can see what goes on. Okay, so remember the tetrahedral molecule had four bonding atoms, no non-bonding electron pairs, because it was a carbon in the center. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of those bonding atoms off, and I'm going to replace it with a non-bonding electron pair. Now remember the non-bonding electron pairs are those pairs of dots that you drew when you drew the Lewis structures on paper. So I'm looking at a molecule that has three bonding atoms and one non-bonding pair. Now I want to show this to you on the model. So remember that this is our tetrahedral molecule. Okay, so I've got four bonding atoms. Let me puck, pluck one. So I ripped one off. Now you'll see there's a, an empty hole. There's, there's a spot missing up here. Well, I can't just have empty spots in molecules. And I'm actually going to replace it with an electron pair. I know, this is going to look a little funky here. You're like, ready? Okay, bam. There's my electron pair. Now you're like, wait, why does it have a flipper? Okay, it's not a flipper. Remember that electrons exist in electron clouds? This is one of those electron clouds. So what happens is I have my three atoms in this little little tr uh, trigonal pyramidal kind of shape, like a, a three-sided pyramid, and then I have this electron pair in this cloud. Now, one thing you need to know, Electron, cloud, electron clouds are very large. When two electrons exist in a bond, they're narrowed between the two atoms that are in that bond. But when they're in a cloud, nothing is confining them anymore, and they can spread out. So even though I plucked one, it doesn't form a trigonal plane or geometry. Those electrons are actually pushed closer into the bonds, and those bonds are then forced towards each other, um, increasing the number of repulsions. Now, this name is what's called a pyramidal. Sometimes you hear it called trigonal pyramidal, just to describe it as a three-sided pyramid. Now, there's no tetrahedral pyramidal in this, so don't worry about it. So, it's just called pyramidal, and the bond angles shrink slightly. So, remember that the tetrahedral molecule was 109.5. This is now 107, and an example of this is ammonia. So, when nitrogen forms three bonds, it's going to form pyramidal-style shapes geometries at 107 degrees are the bond angles. So again, the angles between the atoms will be 107, and NH3 is the example. Now let's pluck another one. So now I have two bonding atoms, still starting with that tetrahedral shape. That's why tetrahedral is along the side, so that you know that I'm starting with tetrahedral. I start with that tetrahedral shape, and I pluck two atoms. I now have two bonding atoms and two non-bonding pairs. Let's go back to the model. Okay, so now this is that same tetrahedral molecule that I plucked one atom from before to form the pyramidal shape. So now I'm going to pluck another one. Boom. Now I'm left with this little guy here. Now sometimes they're called angular molecules, depending on what I'm dealing with. But when I pull this guy out and I replace it with something that has the actual lobes, you can see the electron clouds are right here. Okay, so I've got two atoms that would bond here. Don't worry about it. They're missing. I just didn't feel like putting them in. So there are two atoms that go here. And then now the two atoms that I replaced are replaced with electron pairs. So this is water. This is what water looks like in, a, in real life. And if actually I turn it, people are always like, hey, it looks like Mickey Mouse. Um, yeah, so it's got these big ears, these big lobes. And those lobes take up a lot of space. And when they interact with each other here, there are some huge repulsions that occur. So it pushes down on these, on these atoms even more and shrinks their bond angle. So these electron pairs, remember, take up a lot of space and they cause greater repulsions. But remember, we're all dealing with Vesper, which is the, um, we were trying to eliminate those repulsions. So now I've got a molecule that's forming a bent geometry. And in order to reduce down the repulsions between the electron clouds, it forms 104.5 degree bond angles. An example of this is water. This bent geometry accounts for 90% of all of the properties of water. The reason ice floats on water. The reason why water boils at 100 degrees and freezes at 0 degrees Celsius. The reason why it has a high specific heat. Don't worry, we'll talk about that in thermochemistry. The reason why most of it occurs because of the interactions of those electrons and the fact that it forms a polar shape. If water was linear, 
Oh my goodness, I couldn't even tell you all the things. The Titanic would have never crashed into an iceberg because all the ice would sink to the bottom. 90% of all life in the ocean would be in the top 50 feet of the ocean instead of in the bottom. There's all these things about the world would be totally different if, I, if, if water was linear instead of making this bent geometry. So that covers all of our geometries. Now in the next videos, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about hybrid orbitals. We're going to talk about more advanced how we identify what the shape of the molecules is is from large from large compounds.